Laura. Hey everybody. Welcome to the DYI Do It Yourself All State stage. This is a new feature to the International Motorcycle Show, and we appreciate everybody showing up. We got a really fun topic here for the next se segment, and that is how to build a cafe bike. Is uh, anybody that's familiar with cafe bikes? I'm sure these guys are. We've got the guys from the North Club over here that are going to be helping out with the presentation. And uh, they brought over an example of a, of a cafe bike. And we're going to get into that a little bit. Uh, does anybody here ride a cafe bike? Okay. Well, <laughs> cafe bikes are making a resurgence. A lot of people will think it's uh, you know, a new style of bike, but it's quite possibly the oldest form of custom motorcycle that there is. Uh, what is a cafe racer? Basically, a cafe racer started out post-World War II, uh, primarily in, in the UK, and they uh, had come in and they built a bunch of roads after the war. And on the roads, every 71 miles, they had a cafe. Of course, they didn't call them cafes, they called them cafes. Cafe's French word, you know. So there were cafes, and there were truck stops, basically. And these guys would hang out at the truck stops, and they were young, and they wanted to go fast. Well, here in the United States, the fastest thing you could buy back then was a V8. So that's when the hot rod movement was really going on. But in the United Kingdom, you know, the fastest thing you could buy in Europe was a motorcycle. And there was no such thing as a race motorcycle or a sport bike back then. You just bought a motorcycle. There wasn't a dirt bike or anything else. You just bought a motorcycle and then you had to, if you wanted it to do a special task, you had to build it to do that special task. So the guys who were building the cafe racers were the first custom bike builders ever, pretty much. And they were, they were like a subculture. And uh, the guys who built the cafe bikes, were they called themselves the rockers. They were rockers, and their counterpart were called the mods, okay, and the, and the rockers rode cafe bikes, and the mods rode scooters, and the rockers wore black leather jackets, bowler helmets, and the mods wore bright colors, and wide lapels, and rode scooters, and uh, it was, you know, they were both, both subcultures that were kind of reaching out, you know, and going outside the box a little bit, but they, uh, had different elements. For, for example, like the rockers listened to uh, a lot of white American rock and roll music. Elvis Presley, Buddy Hobb, Eddie Cock, people like that. And the mods were listening to more rhythm and blues, uh, even more, more progressive bands like the Who, the Yardbirds, and things like that, just to give you some idea of where their heads were at the time. And they partied, and they got in fights, and uh, the fights were glamorized far more than they really probably were, but uh, that, it made good news. Uh, but what they would do is they would strip the bikes down, and they would race they'd, from the, the A1 Cafe, which was on the M1, and they would race, they'd start a song on the jukebox, and they would try to get to a certain point and back before the song ended, um, or they would race to the next cap down the road, 71 miles. And the, the big timers were known as the Ton Up Club. Does anybody know what the Ton Up Club means? You could go 100 miles an hour or faster. Okay. Uh, that was a big deal, you know, 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle back then. And on the bikes that they were using, it, it, would, it felt like 200 miles an hour, I'm sure, on some of this stuff. And they would strip the bikes down, uh, similar to the bobbers in the USA, where you would take off the unnecessary things and pull the bike down to make it lighter and faster. And uh, the ergonomics, that, that's when clip on handlebars came to get into more of a race athletic position. And uh, later, later on, the cafe racers started sporting some small front fairings and uh, a signature, you know, rear cowling like that is pretty common. Single seat you know, key to the cafe racer look. But these guys were having a lot of fun, and they really had an impact on motorcycles that we ride today. And a lot of people don't realize that. But the simple approach to building a cafe racer would be to take a motorcycle and start with a relatively small, sporty, or standard motorcycle, 
and you put some clubman handlebars, some clip-on handlebars, or some clip-ons or clubman bars for a lower riding position, some rear foot sets, get your feet up off the ground for cornering so you're not dragging your pegs, uh, a solo seat, key, you know, these guys were not interested in carrying around their wives or girlfriends at the time, and uh, rem removing any really, ex you know, anything extra on the bike that wasn't needed. And that's where it kind of starts. And then the advanced approach, which I'm going to call in some help over here from these guys because they've completely lost their minds on this uh, cafe racing and it's great. But uh, your advanced approach is going to be you start basically by chopping down the frame. Uh, a lot of these old bikes, the frames are just not stiff enough to handle the frame. So, you know, like, what can you add to that? There's some companies around that are doing it. Dennis Tag and I'm with the North Texas North Owners Association, and we promote uh, any vintage uh, European motorcycle uh, here in North Texas. We have about 200 members. There's a whole subculture of bike enthusiasts here in North Texas, and you'd be surprised how many there are. And we have lots of members that have cafe bikes. And yeah, this is one of our member bikes here. This is Bob Dobbs. Uh, Roll in field, and this is typical of uh, something that a, a person could do either in its garage or if you really wanted to, to really spend a lot of money, you can go either way. You know, you can do it on a budget or you can have a professional restore and spend a lot of money on it and really make it cutting edge. Right. But uh, it's really the, the same formula of a, it's basically taking a stock older bike and turning it into a state of the art racer with life. Uh, you can upgrade the suspension, so uh, uh, you take care of add aftermarket shocks, uh, aftermarket front end, and inevitably when you upgrade components like that, the older components like the frame really can't keep up with the technology. So then you're kind of chasing yourself, you start altering the frame, you start bracing it up in areas that are weak, so, so they won't crack or break. You know, right, like so when you start upgrading the modern day suspension components, olden day frames start caving in on you. Same thing with brakes and things like that. Uh, so there's a balance there to be struck and, and you can go the distance, which is what we're talking about now, which is the advanced approach. There's a lot of organizations now, there's some race organizations, uh, uh, a lot, plenty of race classes with ARMA. Uh, some guys out in Portland are racing the uh, CB125 160s, I think. Cafe to Mount. Uh, Riding the old bikes and getting them out where people can listen to them run and really see these old bikes in running condition, not in a static bike show. Right, so, and uh, a couple places to go for that be Mid Ohio Vintage Days, it's a great event. Uh, Barber Motorsports Vintage Days has a phenomenal uh, race event there with a museum where you can really get a hands on on these old motorcycles. They sound really, different. We're really excited because uh, leading into that event is uh, we have a brand new event coming up in March. It's called the Lone Star Classic. And the club is putting it on along with Beacon Cycle, who's a big uh, promoter and, and helper with us. Uh, it's the last weekend of March. It's in Crescent, Texas, south of Fort Worth. And it's going to be a vintage bike race and concourse bike show. Okay, vintage bike race and uh, concourse show, and that's March 25th and 27th through the 27th in Crescent, Texas, Lone Star Classic. So if you really you get into it or you get your bike built by then, definitely show up and you get plenty of good ideas. Um, but there's a it's, a, it's a, it's an approach to this that's an art form. And it's a, where, where art form kind of meets technology. Uh, unlike a lot of the other custom builds that just totally forego performance altogether, the Cafe Racer is really focused more on, on look plus the performance. And that's, that's just some good stuff. Okay, now the classic Cafe Racer, hang on a second because i got a couple of questions for you. Classic Cafe Racer is going to be like a 1960s British single or a, a Norton Triumph BSA. It's a Royal Enfield over here, you know, going right along in those lines. Uh, spoke wheels gives you that, that that authentic look. They didn't have alloy wheels in. Uh, drum brakes. Now, drum brakes. Okay, it's uh, I'm all about vintage and I'm all about uh, retro. Typically, until it comes to brakes 